Welcome back to our continued conversation about forest ecology and how the different parts of the forest work and live together. Trees and animals, water and soil, rocks and weather. There are so many parts to a forest and I'm wondering what you drew and wrote this week. Hello, fourth and fifth grade wild writers of Mamaroneck. You might see a couple teeny tiny little snowflakes in the sky. We've had very funny weather up here this week, and we are still talking about forest ecology, how the different parts of a forest go together, the living things, the non-living things. Within the living things, we think about the producers and the consumers and the decomposers and how everything works together. I did a little decorating of the front of my nature journal. I'm not done yet, but I took a couple of stamps that I had carved one here you can see and one here and I decided or maybe it's this one on this journal nope it's this one I took two stamps that I had carved with a linoleum cutter and this is something you could absolutely do um, I would have an adult keep an eye I did this the first time when I was in sixth grade and a linoleum carver looks like this you can hear there are different tips inside and what I did is I just drew on the eraser and then I carved out what I wanted to remain the color of the paper. And then with the stamp pad, I can simply press it on here. And then in the back of my nature journal, in the corner here maybe, I can press. And then I have that little impression of an oak leaf. If I had done so in the opposite direction, if I had carved the opposite parts and left them, uh, then I would have had a white oak leaf. With, with green leaves or green veins. So this is this is another way to experiment with arts and with your nature journal. I'm giggling a little because I have an old farm cat named Firepaw. I'll show you his picture later. And he's been nuzzling up against the computer here. I think he wants to meet you. So we've been thinking about nature journaling. And I went back in and we had talked about two things especially. One, taking notes on a lecture. And these are the notes that I took on the, the field trip and on Jocelyn Kleinman's talk against the whiteboard. And I went back in, I added color, I reread my notes. And that helped me own that information a little bit more. So this was a great exercise for me. And then remember, I had those questions about the chipmunk and I had written here about how chipmunks interact with the different parts of the forest, how they're part of the forest system. And I had these questions here and I went and I did do research and I found answers to all of my questions in different places. The research I did this time was online and I included all the places that I did research. I started with the National Geographic Kids website and then I ended up Googling some questions and have some other websites here. But I learned that they're so speedy, that's how they protect themselves. There's a woman um, who just, her name is Charlene Couchot, and she studies how the chipmunk language, how they talk to each other. She has little teeny collars that they wear so that she can monitor the sounds of chipmunk chatter. She's what's called a behavioral ecologist. I learned that chipmunks live alone and that in their burrows, they sometimes have little, they have little areas where they stash their food that they say their hoard and they can have, it said their chipmunk cheeks can get three times bigger than their head so, so that they can stuff lots of acorns and foods in there and they can hold lots of acorns. They can gather so many. It was, there's a, there was a number here. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, they can stash 165 acorns in a day. And if you think of the size of an acorn and the size of a chipmunk, that's a lot. So I not, I jotted down all these things that I learned. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. I'm kind of, I told, I told you that I'm writing some poems that include a chipmunk. So Perhaps I'll include some of these facts there, or maybe someday I'll write something else about chipmunks. This chipmunk here, you may have noticed my drawing. Know that I did not draw this all by myself. What I did is I went to a website called Art for Kids Hub. They have a website and a YouTube channel, and it showed me how to draw a chipmunk. So in about seven minutes, I watched and each line that the artist did, and he talked me through it, I then made the same mark to draw this chipmunk. So that was very pleasing and it gave me a whole different look to this nature journal page. So this week we talked about taking notes in a couple different ways. One, from listening to someone else talk and teach us 
And another way is to take our own questions and then to go do research around those questions. I might take this and write up a paper about chipmunks or imagine a children's book about chipmunks. I'm not really sure what I'll do with it, but I also sat in the woods and drew. So my nature journal has many purposes for me, and I hope you are developing and finding different purposes for your nature journal, ways to sit and be part of the world and help your mind find what's interesting to you about nature and what you would like to learn more about. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Take good care. I hope you make it out to the woods. Be healthy, be safe, and I'll see you awful soon. While I have been chatting with you, Firepaw has been lying right beside me. He says hello. This week, I wish you lots of exploration in your nature journal and good time in the forest. We can look at and think about the forest from far away or right close up and we can draw and write and wonder. I would like to read you the final poem from my first book, Forest Has a Song, illustrated by Robin Gorley, published by Clarion. Farewell. Forest breathes a spicy breeze, it blows into my ear. When you go home, do not forget my leaves, my song, my dear. Remember, I am forest. Remember, I am here. Right wild, my mamaronic friends. Right wild.